My sons and I took a break from yurt skiing last year due to extremely high avalanche danger. This year we decided to head once again to Boundary Creek Yurt in the Uinta Mountains of northeastern Utah. We picked our dates back in October and magically guessed at the best conditions in over a month. Our last sizable snowstorm was on January 9th, but we managed to get a foot of new snow the day before our arrival. Fortunately, we were the first ones to the yurt after the storm and could set our own skin tracks and had fresh lines every run. Two years ago, we needed to carefully follow the blue diamonds in the tree so we could find our way back to the car after fresh snow covered our inbound tracks. This year, we happily needed them to help us cut the trail to the yurt and are glad they are there. We made three changes for this year's trip. On our last one, we made the mistake of skiing the entire six and a half miles to Boundary Creek Yurt, going over Dead Man's Traverse. This year, we opted to pay $50 each and take a snowcat from the parking lot to Ridge Yurt and only had to ski the last two miles. We met our driver at 11 a.m. and made it to our destination in time for lunch. That allowed us to climb the mountain to the east and ski a run before dinner. The second change was adding aluminum fins to our polk sleds that help them track better on angled trails. They worked great but did add a bit of drag. We recommend removing them on flat trails should you opt to do the same. Our final change is that we invited Kevin Harrington, a friend of my oldest son, to join us. Having three people pull two sleds is non-ideal. Adding a fourth person made the hikes in and out much easier and did not add too much weight to the sleds. As there are four bunks, four people is the optimal number for visiting Boundary Creek Yurt in winter. One other welcome addition to the trip this year is that we had spotty phone service at the yurt. Two years ago we had to hike halfway up the mountain to be able to call home. This year we could sit on the top bunk and get T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T signals. Naturally, we pretended phone service didn't exist and exchanged only a few messages with home. With the foot of fresh Utah blower and nobody to poach our ski lines, we chose a more open face than two years ago. We then laid down our tracks right next to each other, saving fresh snow for each successive run. The person who reserved the yurt before us did not leave us with much chopped wood, but that didn't bother us as it is a favorite activity of my son's. Kevin also joined in this year and had fun helping with the yurt chores. We made sure to fill the wood pile outside for the people behind us and also burned enough wood to keep ourselves very warm inside. For those on the top bunks, sleeping bags proved to be an optional item that wasn't really needed this year. Backcountry requires that you tone down your skiing significantly. While you can be aggressive at your local ski hill, remember that an injury fall out here means a minimum two mile hike out followed by a bumpy snowcat ride. We had intended to hike to the top of the mountain but settled for our high point from two years ago after hearing collapsing snow layers as we tried to hike higher. The last thing we wanted was to trigger an avalanche and have to self rescue. That is fine as we skied consecutive powder lines all day long. Eventually our three day trip came to an end and we loaded up the sleds for our mostly downhill six and a half mile trip. It took about the same amount of time to get to our car as the combined snowcat and ski tour took us to get to the yurt. Unfortunately this is my youngest son's last yurt trip for a while as he lives in Ohio now and that makes it more and more difficult for this type of adventure. Don't worry my other son and I will continue and hope to invite a new friend next year. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel as there are more videos on the way.